Canada may finally have a clean exit from the F-35, and it's coming from an unexpected place. After years of ballooning costs, U.S. pressure, and worries over lost technological sovereignty, Ottawa looked hard at Sweden's grip and E, only to hit the same wall. Its American-made engine still gives Washington veto power. Now, Rolls-Royce is proposing a non-U.S. engine, potentially cutting that dependency entirely. This isn't a minor technical tweak, it's a geopolitical lever. For a country flying vast distances in brutal Arctic conditions, a Gripen powered outside U.S. control could turn a fighter purchase into a statement of strategic independence. With a Rolls-Royce engine, Canada would no longer need Washington's permission to upgrade, maintain, or resell its fighters. Strategic dependence drops, technological sovereignty rises, and political risk shrinks, exactly what countries like Canada, Finland, and the Czech Republic want. Rolls-Royce brings deep experience in extreme cold operations, offering better Arctic reliability, lower maintenance burdens, and long-term support insulated from U.S. politics. It also enables real industrial benefits, domestic assembly, technology transfer, and Canadian maintenance hubs, something the F-35 model simply doesn't allow. Freed from an American engine, the Gripen E becomes a truly sovereign, export-friendly fighter. It already boasts operating costs around $8,000 per flight hour versus $35,000 to $47,000 for the F-35. 10-minute turnarounds, short runway and highway takeoffs, and proven performance at negative 40 degrees Celsius. Pair that with a Rolls-Royce engine and the advantages compound. Simpler supply chains, faster maintenance, and full freedom to customize systems, including advanced electronic warfare without U.S. export controls. NATO interoperability remains. Control stays Canadian. That's sustainable sovereignty. True sovereignty means the freedom to maintain, upgrade, and operate defense systems without external permission. Against that standard, the F-35 falls short. It's not just costly to fly. It locks countries into rigid U.S.-controlled supply chains, software updates, and upgrade schedules dictated by Lockheed Martin and the Pentagon. Every change runs on Washington's timeline. A Gripen powered by a Rolls-Royce engine offers the opposite, flexibility, autonomy, and real independence. For decades, U.S. influence over Allied air forces hasn't relied only on advanced jets, but on control of engines, software, and critical components built-in veto power over exports, upgrades, and technology transfers. The F-35 is the apex of that model, creating a global dependency network tied to American rules. A non-U.S. Gripen breaks this pattern. It offers a modern, NATO-compatible fighter without American control. No export vetoes, no political leverage through spare parts or software. That matters not just to Canada, but to countries like Finland, the Czech Republic, and budget-constrained nations seeking advanced capability without political strings. Each alternative to the F-35 weakens that long-standing model of influence. For Canada, a Gripen with a Rolls-Royce engine isn't just an aircraft, it's a strategic tool to reshape defense policy on its own terms. First comes real operational independence. Without U.S. export approvals, Canada controls how it upgrades, deploys, and cooperates with partners. Critical in the Arctic, where delays tied to Washington's approval process can be strategically costly. Second is Arctic performance. Rolls-Royce engines are proven in extreme cold, with reliable starts and stable output at temperatures approaching negative 50 degrees Celsius, drawing on experience from polar civilian aviation and military cooperation with northern NATO states. That matters directly for NORAD missions. Third, cost. Gripen already leads Western fighters in low operating expenses, and a Rolls-Royce engine keeps maintenance simpler and supply chains predictable. Independent estimates suggest 30-year ownership costs could be 40 to 60% lower than the F-35. Fourth is industrial sovereignty. A Rolls-Royce partnership enables engine assembly, domestic maintenance hubs, workforce training, and long-term R&D participation in Canada. Benefits the F-35 model largely blocks through Lockheed Martin's tight control. Finally, readiness. Gripen's rapid turnaround, 
short runway and highway operations, and small maintenance crews suit Canada's vast geography. Reported readiness rates of 80 to 90 percent contrast sharply with the F-35's typical 30 to 50 percent. This isn't just theory. Shifts in Canada's procurement signals, Saab's recent emphasis on technology transfer, and heightened sensitivity in Washington all point to one thing. The Gripen, especially without U.S. control, has become a serious strategic alternative. If U.S. officials soon intensify lobbying, raising NATO compatibility concerns or dangling new F-35 incentives, that will be confirmation the Gripen is being taken seriously. The Pentagon doesn't push back unless its leverage is at risk. Public opinion matters too, and recent polls show unexpected grassroots support for the Gripen among defense experts and advocates of domestic industry. When that tide turns, politicians notice. This goes beyond Canada. It signals a potential shift in global defense aviation. For decades, U.S. influence rested not just on superior aircraft, but on engineered dependence, engines, software, and supply chains that force allies to seek permission. A Gripen with a Rolls-Royce engine offers a different model, advanced capability without surrendering sovereignty, controlled costs, and real industrial participation. Canada now sits at a crossroads. The F-35 offers alliance security, but locks in long-term dependence. The Gripen offers flexibility, autonomy, and control over national defense choices. No option is perfect, only different trade-offs. But with Rolls-Royce in play, the balance has tilted sharply. If Ottawa chooses this path, the ripple effects will extend far beyond Canada showing that independence doesn't mean isolation, and sovereignty doesn't mean weakness.